The Weirdest Job in Every State by Nick Johnson. The old J-O-B. It's part of being an adult. Most of adults who are capable of working have a job because we need money so we can buy things. Some of the 147 million of us who currently have a job care about doing a great job, and many of us kind of check in and do enough to stay employed, but that's just about it. The average American will have 14 different jobs in their lifetimes. Some jobs are fun. Some jobs pay a lot, and some jobs pay so low you wonder what the heck you're doing slaving away your entire life. All right, so we're going to talk about different, crazy, unique, weird jobs in this country. Now, Some of these jobs you're going to be like, I didn't know people can make money doing that. And some of these jobs are going to be like, I don't care how much you paid me, I would never do that job. A lot of these jobs are unique to each state and all are very interesting. And we have 50 to go through, so we should probably stop wasting time, unless you're at your job right now and you're trying to waste time. We're going to begin our tour of states with the most random, odd, weird, and somewhat unique jobs in Alabama. Being down in the deep south, you might expect there's going to be some weird crap going on down here, and you'd be right, because in Alabama, you can get a job as a paranormal tour guide. These folks get paid about $13 an hour to walk nosy people through Alabama's haunted cemeteries and haunted houses. You'd have to be brave, though, since sometimes a spirit will follow you home. In Alaska, you can be a hella skiing instructor. Alaska has some really remote ski destinations, which are only accessible by helicopter. You're more of a pilot than a ski instructor, since only the best skiers will attempt this. If you can fly a helicopter and know something about skiing, you can get paid an average $67,000 a year. That goes a long way in Alaska, pal. Bingo is a big deal in Arizona, mostly because they like to gamble there and there's lots of old people everywhere. In Arizona, people are bingo managers. You have to start out turning that bingo ball thingy over and over all day long, but before you know it, you're in charge, and instead of dealing with balls all day, you're just approving payouts and making sure people aren't cheating. Bingo cheaters are some of the lowest forms of life. Anyways, bingo managers make $32 an hour. Bingo! Logging is a big deal in Arkansas because they have a lot of trees. Did you know you could get a job as a log grader? These people measure the logs and make sure they meet the most strict criteria. Like if the log is rotten or shaped weird, they don't put it in the truck. You don't need a college degree to do this, and it doesn't pay too shabby either. Somewhere around $16 an hour. That's more than fast food money, and you're outside all day. California is just weird in general. People are always trying to come up with the next cool, unusual thing. People will pay you to teach their dogs how to surf. You have to know how to surf yourself and you have to have a lot of patience, but you get that part figured out and you can make about 32K a year. Not a lot, but surfers don't need a lot to live on anyways. Weed is legal in Colorado now, so there's no big shock that there's a lot of weed jobs in this state. There are people in Colorado that are cannabis editors. Here you write about the goings on in the marijuana industry, like which strains are new, which edibles are the strongest, and the best places to hide weed candy so the kids don't find it. You can get paid about $41,000 a year to smoke pot. Who said the newspaper industry was dying? Here in Connecticut, autumn leaves are a big deal. People come here from all over to ooh and ah and leaf peep. There are some people whose job it is to go outside and judge which areas have the brightest colors so they can tell people where to go and when. The grading scale ranges from very low to peak to past peak. Now, I could not figure out how much you'd get paid to be a foliage grader. It's probably not a lot, but you'd be getting paid to hike around the mountains, so that's cool. Delaware doesn't come to mind when you think of pirates, but there's some cool interactive pirate-themed cruises here in Delaware, and they need pirates to pretend to be pirates. You get paid 15 bucks an hour. The captains who drive the boats are paid a little bit more than that because they're doing a more responsible job, I guess. There's people who are paid to go out and grab alligators and crocodiles when they get too close to people's homes. Now that's a call you don't want to make. Nuisance alligator trappers come in many forms. Some work for the wildlife service, some work for smaller companies, some are just independent people who work for themselves, so the pay fluctuates. But crocodile wranglers aren't paid enough, I tell you that. Bok, hey, watch your hands. <laughs> that's me trying to imitate a chicken. Down here in Georgia, you can get a job as a chicken sexer. You get paid a grip of money, $60,000 a year, no way, to basically pick a chicken up and see if it's a boy or a girl. And then you put it back down, and then you and that chicken will never have the same relationship again. Golf is a big deal in Hawaii. 
And when your ball goes into the water, you're certainly not getting it yourself. That's what they pay golf ball divers to do. These are people that put on scuba gear and go into the golf course ponds and they collect the balls so they can be resold. Most of the time, golf courses will pay you for each ball you bring back, so the pay depends on how many times you want to go down there and get them. Some balls are worth $2 each, some are worth a quarter. But this guy says he made $15 million over his career golf ball diving. See kids, school is for fools. Avalanches are a big deal out west, where mountain ranges are steep and rugged. They need to pay people to be avalanche forecasters. They test the snow structure and measure snowfall and try to predict when a village or skiers are at risk. Typically employed by the U.S. Forest Service, avalanche forecasters make about $25 an hour. But clearly this isn't a year-round job. A science degree helps, but it's not mandatory, apparently. No, taste testing crack isn't a job in Illinois, but they do need people to taste flavors that go into food. Chicago and other parts of Illinois are home to a number of major food manufacturing brands, and they need people to taste the different new flavors they invent. They call them flavor scientists or flavorists. Professional food tasters get paid about $45,000 a year annually, and there's no rule that you have to spit the food out. Wait until we get to Kansas in three more states and you'll see what I'm talking about. Corn detasseler for reals, Indiana? For decades now, people have worked as corn detasselers in the summer months in Indiana. You basically walk around the cornfields and you pull the tassels off of corn so that it can't pollinate itself. Apparently this provides a better crop of corn. Sometimes the corn is tall, so you should also be tall. The pay is probably the worst of all jobs we're gonna talk about, like $5 an hour under the table. If you're a teenager, it's good spending money, I guess. Go down to Casey's and get a pizza. If you're not afraid of heights, and I mean heights, you could be a wind turbine technician in Iowa. Those are the big windmills that create energy when they spin out on the prairies. If you don't mind climbing up 200 feet in the air, there's a job that pays $26 an hour or 52 k a year just waiting for you. It takes about two years of school to learn how to do this, and they drug test, so that's gonna eliminate about half of Iowa. But you don't need formal schooling, nor do they drug test dog food tasters. Yes, they pay people not nearly enough to eat dog food. Well, technically, you don't have to eat it if you don't want to eat it. You're supposed to taste it and spit it out, but some people probably eat it. Honestly, how do they know if something that tastes good to us will taste good for dogs? I mean, dogs will eat anything. Why are we so worried if it tastes good? Just eat it. Anyways, Kansas is one of the largest producers of pet food in the country. With a long equestrian tradition, you can imagine there's lots of horse-related jobs in Kentucky. There are people called farriers, which make horseshoes and they fit them onto the horses. You have to go to horseshoeing school to learn how to do this delicate trade. Yes, there's a horseshoeing school, but all that time you spend underneath the horse pays well. You start out working for Ma and Pa making 25K a year, but if you get good, some rich guy will pay you 200K a year to shoe his prized racehorse. Louisiana has all kinds of weird heebie-jeebie history all around. There's psychics here which get paid various amounts of money to pretend to tell you about your past or your future. Some work independently and prey on tourists. Some are paid pretty well. The government will even pay psychics to help solve mysteries. Some Scooby-Doo shit indeed. I'm psychic. Did you know that? Really, Mappy? Like, you can tell me the future? I can. Can you predict this? Hey! <laughs> JK, Mappy. Hey, by the way, an alert viewer named John Jorgensen, he said he wanted your autograph. I don't think I've ever seen your autograph before. Here it is. That's not even a cool autograph, Mappy. Come on, man, you can do better than that. Mappy, he's a map. You think you'd have a cool autograph? Want to dig for worms and get paid for worming? In Maine, you can do just that. Lots of fishermen here need sandworms for bait. So worm diggers walk all around the beaches and they dig up worms. You don't need college for that. You could even do that as a side hustle. One guy says he makes 50,000 a year digging up worms. But it's hit and miss. On a bad day, he says he gets zero worms. <laughs> you think? Apparently, it's getting harder and harder to find prized sandworms in Maine. Nobody knows why. Maybe they're just getting smarter. Because of the ghetto that is Baltimore, murder rates in Maryland are through the roof. Thus, the need for crime scene cleaners. They're very popular in Baltimore. You show up with buckets and rags and make the mess go away. It pays about 40 k a year to clean up blood and brains. It's a thankless job and a perfect example of how crime pays. And the way this ghetto country is heading, the future is bright for young aspiring crime scene cleaners. You can test robots in Massachusetts. It's like playing with toys all day. Boston is home to Boston Dynamics, a major robotic manufacturer. And like crime scene cleaners, the job outlook is looking up for robot testers because there's robots that do pretty much anything these days. 
Is it me or was Rosie kind of hot? Like in a robot maid kind of way? No? Okay, maybe it's just me. She should put on something more revealing every now and then though. What do you think? Like Massachusetts is good at making robots, Michigan is great at making furniture. I mean, they don't make cars here anymore, so they gotta make something. Lazy Boy is based here, as are other lesser known furniture makers. They pay people to sit in sofas, chairs, and couches to make sure they're comfy. How much do they make? $52,999. What the? What the? In some cities, they pay you $64,000 a year? What am I doing wrong? You may not know it, but Minnesota has one of the nation's largest health research industries in the country and is home to the Minnesota Sleep Institute. They get government grants to study how we sleep and how it impacts our health. They need professional sleepers. You can get paid to sleep. You're making money in your sleep. The work is hit and miss, but talk about a side hustle. I wish I got paid to sleep. On school days, I never want to get out of bed. I know, kid. I know how you feel. I think we all feel like that sometimes. How do you finally get yourself out of bed on those days? I get my phone out. <laughs> okay, not a surprise at all. Oh, this is a cool one. In Mississippi, there's a need for bird nest protectors. The Audubon Mississippi Coastal Bird Stewardship Program, that's a mouthful, pays people like you and me to watch over bird nests and build bird fences all around them. You get paid about 12 bucks an hour. It doesn't pay well, but the reward is far greater than the salary. So uplifting. Here's an interesting fact. In Kearney is Midwest Game Supply Company, which makes casino dice. That may not sound like a product that needs an entire building, but there's a lot of care and precision that goes into making casino dice. They have to be perfect or somebody's getting their finger chopped off. As such, they pay people to roll dice all day and they pay people $48,000 to roll dice. And there's a site called dice.com. There's a whole website about dice. Whole website about dice. In Montana, there are horse therapists. And no, I don't mean counselors to help horses get over loss, but I'm sure that exists too. No, these horse therapists use horses to help people cope with tragedy. Depressed and emotionally scarred people benefit by being in the comfort of horses. And horses are great for helping people in physical therapy too. There's kind of an unspoken connection between horses and people. And horses are very good at responding to nonverbal cues. What a treat it would be to spend your days helping people and hanging out with horses, huh? Nebraska is basically just vast, endless cornfields. Somebody has to help organize it. Drone operators are highly sought in this state. They don't pay too poorly either. The yearly equivalent is about 42000 a year, but the range is pretty big. If you work for yourself, you get a bigger cut out of the pay. If you work for a company, then you get paid less than that. That's just how life is. Only in Nevada would a hangover cure specialist be a thing. There's a lot of companies here that specialize in helping revelers get over their post-party pain. You ring them up, they show up with all sorts of cures like intravenous treatments and other modern remedies. They'll even come to you if you're too hungover to leave your room. Wealthy people will pay anything you want to make the pain go away. The average pay is $225 per visit. For some odd reason, there's companies in New Hampshire that specialize in turning the ashes of your loved ones into artwork. The amount of money they make depends on a lot of things, but you can turn your grandmother's ashes into anything from a rose to a dragonfly to an ashtray, all made in glass. Sadly, people litter and they throw gum all over the place in big cities in New Jersey. So municipalities will pay people to come out and not only clean the gum off the city streets, but to put stuff down that'll stop gum from sticking on the sidewalks in the first place. If you own your own company, there is no set salary you make, though some companies make 100,000 a year cleaning gum. If you're the gum scraper guy, you probably get paid minimum wage, but hey, free gum. Here in the state of New Mexico, hot air balloons are all the rage. I would never get into one because they sometimes crash into power lines and you never know really where they're gonna go. It's just where the wind blows, but that's why they have hot air balloon chasers. The people who follow the hot air balloons around until they land and then they pack everything up. It pays about 13 bucks an hour plus tips. The pilots make quadruple that. This is a pretty boring one, but it's weird. The world's largest fortune cookie manufacturing center called Wonton Food is based in New York City and they need fortune cookie riders and they make $50,000 a year making up dumb fortunes. You can make a fortune making up dumb quips and one-liners. The faster you churn them out, the more you'll be rolling in the dough. Sorry. North Carolina's home to Four Cents and One. It's a company that tests sensory properties and they need people to test whether or not face products are safe. 
So if you want to put on makeup that may or may not make your skin fall off, or give a potentially skin piercing new razor blade a go round, you could work as a face feeler. Yes, that's a thing. You get paid crummy money to risk your good looks. I would never put anything on my face that isn't tested on animals first. <laughs> I, I can tell, Karen, your makeup looks so perfect today, as it does every day. What a detached woman she is. North Dakota ranks fourth in the nation for potato production. Therefore, they need potato graters. If you want to be a potato grater, you have to be able to tell the difference between 50 various shades of brown and beige. And you also have to like the taste of raw potatoes. And you have to be able to tell the difference between all 200 potato varieties in existence. And you don't get paid a lot of money for that very esoteric knowledge either. Poison Ivy is apparently such a nuisance in Ohio that they have to hire poison ivy control workers, which go out and ascertain the extent of the poison ivy, recommend solutions, and even remove the intruding unpleasant undergrowth. Pay? 27 bucks an hour. Oklahoma has a bunch of herders. They herd cattle. But it's not just roping and riding around on your horse all day. You have to pick up poop, dispose of dead cattle, fix fences, and drive machinery around. Everything but the poop part and the dead animal part sounds kind of fun. The ladies probably love it, especially that paycheck, feller. No, wiping up liberal tears off the streets of Portland is not a job, but can you imagine how many people they would need? Professional snugglers is a job in Oregon, though. Yes, there are companies in Oregon that will pay you to provide snuggling services. You can even become certified as a professional snuggler. Basically, you show up and hold people. The whole COVID thing has basically put pro snugglers out of work. But when we aren't in a pandemic, you can earn $80 an hour. Sounds great, but wait until you see who you have to snuggle up with, pal. There are many Hershey's chocolate plants in Philadelphia, and thusly, there's a need for chocolate tasters. You can't have any allergies, and you have to have all your teeth and you have to have a certificate in chocolate tasting, which is run by the International Institute of Chocolate and Cocoa Tasting, or the IICCT, or you can go to the Fine Arts Cocoa and Chocolate Institute, or the Girardelli Chocolate Discovery Center, or the Ecole Chocolat, so fancy, or many of the other similar educational institutions to learn how to taste chocolate. Anyways, beginners get paid shitty, but good chocolate tasters make bank Rhode Island is famous for its seafood, particularly quahog or clam. They're everywhere here, and they need people to shuck them. Semi-professional clam and oyster shuckers rake in about $12 an hour. That's not a lot of clams, right? Sorry. You may not know it, but South Carolina makes the most kazoos of any other state. Those are plastic toys that try to pass as musical instruments. They need people to make them. The pay sucks, or blows. <laughs> So you want to be an actor, but you can't break into Netflix and you don't have a huge YouTube channel like Nick Johnson? Move to South Dakota and be a Deadwood reenactment actor. Deadwood's a former frontier town famous for its importance in the 1800s. Now, the former saloon town reenacts shootouts for easily entertained tourists. And you don't even need a mustache. They'll give you one. Axe throwing is a big deal now across the nation. And if you can believe it, axe throwing is huge in Tennessee. Basically, you just show up to a booth and throw an axe at a target like people did in the medieval days. It's easy to manage, and you really only have to watch out that drunk chicks don't throw an axe at you, or be willing and able to take an axe out of the hands of a drunk man much bigger than you. All of this for 13 bucks an hour. There are 18 species of scorpions that run around every square inch of Texas, which also means in cars and in beds. Somebody has to get them out. It's kind of like being a ghostbuster. You get an ultraviolet light, because they glow in the dark, and you find them, and you remove them, without getting stung. Scorpions suck. If you have your own scorpion removal company, you can make a lot of money. If you work for somebody else, you won't. Or you could just go out into the desert and milk them. Scorpion venom is the most expensive liquid on the planet, $39 million per gallon. But you'd have to milk 2.64 million scorpions to get it, so that's not feasible. Would you ever milk scorpions? No. <laughs> I didn't think so. Hey Juan, what about you? Would you ever milk scorpions? Si. Good, cool. Hey, look, I'll give you a bucket. You go out into the desert and milk a bunch of scorpions for a while. When you get a gallon, come back and I'll give you a hundred bucks for it. How's that? I go do it right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. For some reason, people in Utah are burying their pets in cemeteries. Pet cemeteries are called. 
Pet cemetery caretakers get paid $30,000 a year to rake leaves and shoo teens away. Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream! Ben and Jerry's factory is in Waterbury, Vermont, and they offer tours where you can watch them create and package their product. They churn out about 350,000 pints a day here. Dad won't be impressed when you call home and tell him you're an ice cream factory tour guide, but he will be impressed by all the free stuff you bring home from work. Now we mentioned reenacting actor jobs earlier. There's a ton of Civil War reenactments which happen in Virginia. Many are put on by people for free, but some museums offer reenactments as part of their museum tours. You just have to wear really dirty, heavy clothing in the worst summer months and be able to pretend to die six times a day. However, there's a whole list of really expensive stuff you have to buy first, which some estimates put at about $1,000, but that seems low. So you're in the hole before you even begin, but you'll have a cool Halloween costume every year. The American Horticulture Society is based in Seattle. These therapists make people feel better by helping them tend a garden. Lots of people in Seattle pay money to have you put them to work digging up things. Why don't they just dig up their own garden at home is an answer I don't have. That's Seattle and the pay's good. So there's these ghost towns all over in West Virginia, places that used to be railroad hubs or mining towns. They're managed by the National Park Service, which for some reason deems it necessary to employ people to run them. They're ghost towns. There's supposed to be no one there. Wisconsin gets a lot of snowfall. If you don't remove it, it can actually cause your roof to cave in. Most people don't want to get on their own roofs during the wintertime, so they hire people to come out and get the snow off. It pays well. The work is spotty. Wyoming, our last state. This is a pretty random one, and you'd have to be a teenager. In order to crack down on underage cigarette sales, they pay teens to go into liquor stores and gas stations and try to buy smokes. And if they sell them to you, they get in big trouble, mister. And your biggest reward isn't the pay. It's bragging to your friends at school that you bought 27 packs of cigarettes today. Now there's all kinds of other jobs that we could have talked about. Like there's water slide testers and there's bed warmers and there's funeral mourners. Like there's people that you can pay to come to your funeral and cry and act like they give a shit about you. The point is there's all kinds of things that we could do in this country. Just got to find the right job. If you're trying to get out from behind your desk job or you're just looking to make some extra money. These are just a few ideas for you. Now, just be careful out there if you're gonna go milk scorpions, though. Not only do they sting, but their little nipples are hard to find. I don't like my work. My boss is such a jerk. I think he's quite berserk. I want to be free. I need a job for me, something so unique. Work can be so free, a job that really pays. Work can be unique, a job that isn't lame. Work can be happy, a job where I can play. A job that's far away, a job that I don't hate. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great! You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching, and remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.